Hi, welcome back to the channel. Now it's been a while, but today we're going to do a quick walkthrough of the A7R5 menu system. Well, the A7R5 is the new Sony megapixel monster, the 61 megapixel just like the 4. And this one has the AI autofocusing system and plenty of other features that, well, kind of excite me. So um, let's dive into the menu and see what we have to unlock to get everything working. Okay, let's do this. So this is the basic screen and we're going to start with the FN menu. Push the FN button, you get the function menu, drive modes, of course, the basics, timers and then the different bracketing possibilities. This is a new one, focus bracketing or um, focus stacking. you got the increments by which um, it takes steps. There's going to be a different video only on this, only to illustrate the focus bracketing. And these are the number of shots it's going to make, the camera is going to make to get everything in focus. So focus stacking is going to be a different video altogether. This is just the fact where it is. Um, of course, when you're setting it up, please, please, please do yourself a favor and always start with the shortest possible interval and with a new folder that you open that you actually make for each bracketing select section otherwise you'll never find back how and where the pictures are okay so we continue white balance bracketing of course the row bracketing everything basic now we're going to put the drive mode here and then we go continue to the focusing mode autumn now, AFC means it's going to continue focusing all the time, which is the best thing for the things I do. Events, focus area, of course, center for, um, well, the DSLR users, and then the focus area you can move all the time, or the tracking. Okay, auto ISO, very easy to use. Even if you work full manual, you can actually say, okay, I'm going to put in my diaphragm and my speed, my aperture and my speed completely manual. And I'm going to let the camera decide the, I the ISO. So pretty easy. Met metering mode. Now we're going to change the spot later on um, because automatically it goes to the middle. And we're going to change that. Highlight metering is very good if you want to um, get your highlights, your skies in order and the rest will be, well, pretty dark. All right, these are all the possibilities. We're going to dive into those later. Same thing for this. Target recognition. So these are the things it's going to recognize. And later in this video, we're going to see how it all works and what you all have to set up. Creative looks. Okay, let's just show you how it what it looks like. So um, these are the different looks: uh, vivid, neutral, um, uh, more um, well with more clarity, um, black and white, sepia, and of course, as you can see, you got all these para um, possibilities to change your look to, uh, in the way you like it. Contrast, saturation, highlights, shadows. So this only works for your JPEGs, which means it doesn't affect your RAWs, but it's very interesting if you work like me, RAW plus JPEG, and the JPEGs you want to immediately deliver to your clients the same day or even the same hour, and then later on you'll work on the RAWs and get them perfect but if you want your jpegs looking the way you like it you can tweak them in here so now this is new this main menu uh, tab it comes from the cinema cameras you'll also notice it in the fx30 and here you can actually change the most important things so it's like um, well several other brands and cinema cameras have this tab just where you can change the most important things we're going to quickly scroll through it. In photography, in stills, it's all, only one tab. And in video, there's going to be two. Okay, I like working in RAW plus JPEG. I explained why. Now, you got for your RAW files, um, lossless, compressed. Um, and you can choose large, medium, small, which means the large, the um, large is 61 megapixels, medium is 26 and small 15 so we got three sizes of raw three sizes of jpeg and now two two card slots and you can switch 
and sort them. I'm going to sort them. That's what I always do. So on one slot, I'm going to that now auto switch of course means that if one card's full it's going to use the other one and i'm going to put gpx on one card and raws on the other so let's redefine the kind of raws we want i prefer uncompressed which has the maximum dynamic range and for now i'm going to use extra fine gpx because well none of the software supports a raws at the moment well over and under compensation you can do it in the menu or on the button of course. Sizes is something uh, we're going to see here. The sizes. Now, 32 has the most megapixels. 16 by 9 is movie size. And of course, for your uh, squares, you got 1-1. Uh, one, one. White balance, well, same as always. You can always tweak them yourself as well. You get your Kelvin set. That's all basic stuff. GPEG HIF, you already know the HIFs. Um, software still isn't uh, generally supporting HIFs, so I'm staying with GPEGs at the moment. And in video, I'm going to use the 4K S mode, which is H264. Um, interlaced is, well, large files, but well, easy to read. HS, of course, is H265 which makes it uh, harder, is better compression, but very hard for your computer to read. Recording, now you got 10 bit, of course, if you want it, and you got in 4K, 25 and 50 um, frame rate, P frame rate in PAL, of course. APS-C, well, this one depends on uh, the lens you use. So if you put an APS-C lens on a full frame A7R5, you'll get, um, well, immediately cropped. The HLG, of course, doesn't work with RAWs. You need GPEX for it. You can choose your own color space. I'm leaving it like it is. And we're going to put the distortion compensation for lenses on automatic. All right. Now, the, f the real menu. Format is like the last cameras. You'll see which slot you're using or which slot you're going to format which is pretty important. Well, recording media settings we just did, so that uh, should be in order. And this is, well, databases you can recover, uh, media display, media info you can display, not the most, most exciting things. Now, files and folder numbers. Um, reset means it goes back to one every time. We're not going to do this. There we are, but we're going to do change the names, of course, so I know which camera produced which images. So this is the A7R5, so we're going to call this 7R5. We only got three letters, sadly enough. The folder name, I put them in dates. That way, it's always, I always, every day there's a new folder and it never gets mixed up. Easy for me. Copyright info, well, serial number, always put it on. Um, and then the copyrights, I'm quickly going to set mine so you know whose pictures these are. Of course, this all this information or automatically um, is embedded in the metadata, in the EXIF data. So it will always be in your, cam in your pictures. And we have noticed that Facebook tries to remove this. So once you upload pictures to Facebook, all your EXIF data get lost. Okay. Well, this is for uh, recalling memory settings. So you can program several settings in f uh, stills and in movie. And then you can like just switch on your button on top and get that setting back. That's for easy changes. Most of this was already done. There's a self timer for bracketing. I'm going to put it from minus to plus. And then this is for the focus bracketing. That's going to be a different video, as I already said. Pixel shift, multi shooting. All right. This makes 
this moves the sensor a little bit and then it makes 16 shots to be combined into one super megapixel shot for of uh, I think 240 megapixels or something it's huge giant we can choose the shutter type or leave it automatic of course once you go into silent it always goes into electronic and then auto pixel mapping now that's important um, if you leave this off and you put your camera in silent it will not do um, pixel mapping at the beginning of the month which means it will not go map where your um, cap the sensor has a little default so please leave that as not the target the curtain shutter that's for flashes and the flicker is for banding lights so at the moment we don't need it that's very important that's a very important feature we're going to put in the fn menu afterwards steady shot well let's leave it on for the moment and we're going to leave it adjusted automatically now in a second you notice you got a zoom function now this doesn't work with raw photography but if you shoot jpegs or do movie you can use clear image zoom which zooms onto your sensor and actually doesn't lose any quality uh, grid lines of course those are the lines where you can uh, see how everything is straight or you can use the rule of thirds and a live this live effects display then you can see whatever you have changed, how the light is going to look into your picture. Always put this off if you're going to use external flashes. Of course, in studio flashes, always put live view off. There we are. Exposure. Now we got a bulb timer, which means you can go over the 30 seconds for bulb without keeping it in your hand. You can just program um, the time you want. I think it's up to uh, well 900 seconds. So uh, you can do really, really long exposures. Um, don't forget to use your ND filters in that case. At the moment, we don't need it. And we go back. Now, auto ISO, as I explained, very useful. I leave my ISO most of the time in auto. Um, they're pretty reliable, which is good. Range limits, well, this is the max, 5105. Now, this is important. Auto ISO minimum shutter speed. If you put in here uh, one five hundredth of a second or one sixtieth of a second if you're in auto ISO the camera will not go below this speed which is important for yes movement um, I've had it for example during an air show at one two thousandth of a second and then the camera never went underneath that speed and my ISOs went up all the way but it's okay Metering mode, of course, spot metering, very important to not have the center, but the focus point. So this way, if you got um, spot metering on, it will always measure the light where your focusing point is, which is the most important point of your, ca of your uh, image. Ambient and flash, please. This may, it's going to compensate for both. Mm, that's the most important. Now we got um, priority settings and auto white balance lock, which means that if you put the sh uh, press the shutter half to lock something, it will not change white balance. Zebras. Please put them on, they indicate where there's too much light. Put them high enough, at uh, 95 I always put them, so you can see what will be what will be clipped, what will be too white before shooting, and then you can always compensate afterwards. AF tracking, you can change the sensitivity, which means if you put it on locked on, it's going to stay on your target, and if you put it on responsive, it's going to change very fast it's going to change um, whenever it sees something that's uh, more important or it thinks it's more important um, pre-af 
that's only going to eat your battery. That's not very useful in this case. Focus area, never touch switch VHAF. Never. Uh, if you want to see what happens if you do, watch the video with the menu um, of the A7 IV and read the comments below. Somebody did it by accident. I prefer, here you can see, you can choose what kind of focusing uh, actions you prefer not to have or to have. For example, never. you say, I never track. Okay, you can eliminate tracking. And then, never ever touch this. Thank you. You'll, I prefer red, of course, seen my name. And all the others are, well, not very, very interesting. Except the circulating of the focus point, which means um, that your focusing point will move out of the screen on the right and return on the left, for example. That's sometimes pretty handy. And this gives you the opportunity to move your focusing point in larger steps than normally. Well, sometimes it's useful. Okay. Subject recognition. Now, that's an important one. Um, let's start with humans, of course. And you get several options. Tracking, uh, shift range, which means how good it's going to track, how it's going to stay on. Let's look at it, how it works. And you can see it, um, well, works pretty decently, to say the least. And this is uh, for another video about the FX30 that will come out soon. And you see how it just continues tracking my eye and keeping me in focus, whatever strange things I do. Now, Animal Bird is a new one. It's going to put both animal and bird. It's going to look for both of them together. You can prioritize the way you prefer. And you can even say, okay, I want the head, body, eye, eye, head. You can like choose whatever it, uh, it's going to select first. Or even just deselect certain things. And then the same thing for um, animal and bird. See how fast it shifts its tracking, how persistent it is, um, how responsive, and what to recognize first. So let's try this on an animal. We're going to put it on human. It's not going to recognize the horse. Let's change it to animal and bird. And suddenly, clack, it finds an eye. And then the same thing if we put it on animal, of course. It's just going to find it immediately. And then we put it on bird and see what happens. It goes looking for birds and doesn't recognize the horse, of course. All right. In here, of course, in the FN menu, you can always change the basics as well. That's good. And you got much more. You got uh, animals apart. Birds apart, you got uh, insects, cars and trains, and even airplanes. That would have been useful a while ago. Now, left eye, right eye, that's going to be the next one. Well, if you never shoot any birds, leave the birds out of it. If you never shoot any planes, leave them out, but just leave them on for now. Now, left eye, right eye, you can choose for portraits which eye you're going to use or prioritize. Yeah, otherwise not going to show uh, the things you're photographing and then you can like put in fix some faces yourself uh, for example for a marriage for a wedding you can choose the bride and groom so it will try and prioritize those that's something sony has been doing for a very long time now And we are into the play mode. So you can choose whatever card you want to see what's on it. That's pretty important. If you got uh, sele um, different cards. Now always try to put in the fastest card possible. I'm using the CF Express Type A cards. Um, the reason I use fast cards is because otherwise your buffer will fill up and you will, well, won't be able to do anything else. With CF Express cards, your buffer is empty immediately. And of course, 
when the buffer is empty there's less strain on the processor and the internal buffer and there will be less overheating okay you can rate your pictures in camera there you go you can choose the stars and they get taken over by Lightroom well if you want to delete you can fast delete just press delete twice I'm not gonna do this because I'm pretty clumsy but then the important one the editing crop rotate copy but you can take your video and cut pictures out of it now once you've programmed this there's another video another article and video on this subject so you can see how to program them and you can use your uh, big button at the back and you see what action you can do with it pause it slow motion it and then with the below button you can like cut out the picture you want in 4k you got 8 megapixels as a picture which is enough for um, online use but of course you got 8k in this camera which will give you i think uh, a 33 megapixel picture which is pretty big the same size my a7 IV actually so it works like that pretty easy pretty good as you can hear i'm a little sick so uh, my voice is uh, a little hoarse okay if you make a lot of pictures you can display them as groups so all the bursts go into groups and then focusing frame we've got a special um, article and video on that as well now if you make a lot of pictures you want to scroll through them you can always choose to put we'll go by one by one by ten by hundreds by minutes by time so that's pretty important pretty good to connect it with your smartphone well, we're going to see how it works of course you got the, the famous scannable qr code but let's quickly see you can how we're going to do it here you can choose what kind of pictures will be transferred as you can see you can put in raws and jpegs now large pictures as well in the old days it was only two megapixels now you can go big on your cell phone have fun with the transmission and it goes like this so you got the imaging edge mobile app and it's going to connect with your camera in the rear you see my beautiful cat kiwi it's going to connect please connect please okay perfect and then you can start focusing by touching your cell phone screen and it will of course do everything from there got the eye auto focus for animals on you can make the pictures you can change into video and make video and you can go into the menu let's see if that works or you can change the exposure and everything it can all be done from here from your cell phone it's wi-fi and bluetooth so that's pretty handy as well but i'm never the handiest person with cell phone sliders so sorry for that okay let's go into the menu well, let's make a few there we are all possible settings you can change from your cell phone to the camera and yes it's in dutch i know on off well everyone understands it Okay, back to the screen. We can also do playback on the phone screen. There we are. And zoom in and see how the JPEG looks at all these high ISOs. There's something else in the menu from the cell of the cell phone that we should really show, and that's load and save your settings. Well, I've got the tracking on by touching the screen, of course. Uh, there we are okay now you can on your cell phone in the app you can load and you can uh, save uh, the settings of your camera you can like um, choose to 
I think it's 22 settings, well, the most important settings that you can actually save to your phone. And then you can just upload them later on to the, every camera of the same kind. So um, if you got an A7R4 or an A7 IV, you can like save the settings and then any other A7 IV or A7R4, you can load your A7 IV or A7R4 settings. This has been possible since the A7R R4 in 2019 and all the full frame cameras have it in the meantime. Now it's not possible to say, for example, A7 IV settings to an A7 S or the other way around. You always have to stick with the same model. But still, if you give a lot of workshops and people touch your camera or you got a loan camera or a rental camera, it's pretty handy to uh, be able to just upload those settings and you can check it here uh, let me see where it is uh, there we are these are all the cameras that I uh, have their settings saved well there are some I admit and here you just choose what to load or um, what to save you can also save uh, your camera settings on an SD card and we'll see how that works later on but then you can save less settings than in on the camera on the, the cell phone right these are not needed at the moment streaming via, via USB you can like go to 4k 12 images um, remember that of course uh, nowadays you only have to plug in your uh, USB-C into the camera and into the computer and most programs for streaming will recognize automatically that you uh, have a new webcam a 4k webcam at 1.2 for example which is pretty neat Bluetooth pairing well, you need of course a Bluetooth a device to pair with yes and I don't have anything in the neighborhood of course okay that's land network that's um, not the most important thing except I'm gonna give this one a different name this camera so I know which one is mine when there are several a7r5s together Okay, this is basic, very basic. Now uh, you can film, yes, you can film both NTSC and PAL, but unlike with the A7S III, you cannot, cannot read them on the same card at the same time. This was, I, I was telling you about saving your settings to an SD card. This is for course to reset everything and here you can load or save them your settings to an SD card I think those are 10 settings and on the cell phone it's 22 I'm gonna show you a few settings that I change in the custom keys and dials now there are actually some rules that I hold uh, very dear under my buttons I put everything I need to do without my eye leaving without my eye leaves the screen APS-C for example now you can switch with one touch of the button in between full frame and APS-C in between 61 megapixels and 26 megapixels so that's very very handy especially with a fixed focal length I'm gonna quickly scroll through the rest and so I was saying everything you need to be able to do while your eye is looking through the EVF put it underneath the button and your muscle memory will know where it is everything you don't want to look into the menu for put it on your FN menu uh, everything you need but well that's not if it's something you're going to use every day all the time put it in your favorites menu that's a little star menu that we're going to fill up later on and most importantly of course tracking on the button of the lens which means it will start tracking 
as the, from, the, from the moment you push that button and hold it. And yes, buttons can be different for uh, stills, video and play, which we are doing right now. And I'm going to even put photo capture to a button as I always do. So we can do that very, very fast. Now in the FN menu, same thing. Uh, you can change everything for photo, for stills, and then everything for movie. Those are different function menus. And um, if you're... Um, if you're in stills, you see the stills possibilities. If you're in video, you see the video possibilities. Very handy. These are just some things that I like to put in. If you want to follow the same, well, you can always push, push slow motion and look it through or see where it is to be find, found. I'm leaving this in the video just so you know where to find it. There are some things basically that I prefer to change. For example, putting interval or um, interval shooting. Stop. Before we go any further, I must ask you something. Now, every YouTube guru always says that I should proactively ask my viewers, that's you, to like, share, and even comment this video and to subscribe, of course. Now, would you please? Thanks. And if you have any questions about this camera, just ask me in the comments below and I'll see if I can answer them. And now we continue. Sorry for the interruption. Now you can set different, now you can see, for example, how many times have you had your picture profile active in video and made a picture, made a photo and seen, okay, it's still in that picture profile and you got like a horrible photo. Now here you can like say, okay, I will set things differently. So if now the picture profile is on, it will not work for photo. Automatic for monitor. And these are all the options you can of information you can see in your monitor, in your on your screen. And you can select which ones you want to keep. I'm always going to leave monitor off, off because otherwise if you got by accident no monitor no finder you will be able won't be able to see anything you can customize dials keys and let's see what it all can do i'm leaving these the way they are basically now for touch operation of course uh, sensitivity if you put on sensitive it might be that your nose is touching the screen and it will activate the touch um, and swipe up for the fn menu that's pretty handy it's a new one that's on the zv1f as well and then touchpad settings of course absolute position and which is the area that to operate on when you are um, on the EVF with your eye and then very importantly with HDMI attached you cannot change touch function in shooting so we'll do this we'll show this differently uh, of course it's disabled so I'm going to use touch tracking now when you touch something on the screen the camera is automatic you're gonna track that the new one is touch shutter i don't really like it but well many people will monitor brightness the brighter it is the better you're going to see it in the light of the sun and it puts this one to 120 frames refresh rate in the evf okay most importantly is this, the, the one below auto power off for temperature put it on high uh, otherwise your camera is going to shut down during video because it gets a little warm. It doesn't matter if it gets warm, it won't die. USB, now you can choose several things, but I prefer to select it every time I connect to USB. This time I can change, well, on the fly. And of course, if you put USB power supply off, it will not recharge through USB-C. Same for HDMI, you can choose everything you like. Now choose 
the output option you need for the machine you're streaming to. Now the next one's going to be very important, anti-dust function. When you put it on, your camera shutter will close and protect your sensor when you shut your camera off and change lenses. It protects you from dust, not everything, but be very careful when you do it. And in here you can do updates for software, just put in an SD card with new software and here you can then update it. That's a new way of uh, updating firmware. Okay, let's put some things into the favorites menu. Okay, I'm just gonna select several things that I always use and then put them in. You can do it in slow motion and see what I put where, but well, these are the things I put in every, in the different um, tabs. You got so much place, so fill it up, pick everything you need, uh, just put them in. Well, use a little bit of logic for yourself that you know where to find certain things. For example, everything for connectivity in one tab, everything for um, folders and formatting in one tab, uh, everything for uh, tracking and everything in one tab. So everything for flash work in one tab and then life will be so much easier. If you want to see what and where, put it in slow motion or put it on pause. And once again, sorry for my voice, but I'm really feeling the pain of talking at the moment. So once everything has been set, we'll switch from photo to video and we do that through the button on top, just like the A7 IV, hop, SNQ or video. And then you get two main menus, of course, just like uh, the FX's. And this is just overview of the most important things you can change in here. And let's start with the picture profiles. So I'm just going to show you what the picture profiles do, what effect they have on your image. Uh, you got the Cine ones. That's five and six. Those are actually the best for, um, well, uh, dark situations. Got all the S logs, which are good if you want to grade a lot, if you want to have all the dynamic range. HLG, that's a nice one if your screen supports it. And my favorite is S Cinetone number 11, that comes from the Venice and Cinema cameras. There you see everything you can change in the main menu. Please don't format. Now using your zoom, clear image zoom in video, as I said before, now that's a good tip, that's a pro tip, use it. We're not gonna change a lot here. I'm just gonna quickly show you and give a new name to the files. That's something you can do as well. And then it's a little more personalized, your video name. There we are. Okay. Time code is very important if you're working with different cameras together. Transition speed, sub shift subjectivity, uh, that's all very, very nice. And you got all the recognitions as well. Okay, the event menu. Now, focus mapping, not very visible in here, but focus mapping is going to show you uh, where, uh, what is in focus. So, what's clear is in focus, what's red is 
in front of the focus and what's blue is behind the focus points so then you can see if you're on the correct place or even if you have to stop down a bit so let's be honest is this a7r5 the perfect camera for me well everything it does it does with excellence autofocus is just wow you know i was wowed by the previous generation and this one is like one leap ahead again um, silly things like you know the new screen just imagine you're uh, one of those many vloggers who want to film themselves like i'm doing right now um, but you want to do it vertically you know you got this flip screen ah, you're not going to see it because your tripod's going to be here now with this one you can like go like this and still see something not everything but still enough you know it's those silly small engineering feats that they've put into it that make it like another leap forward and i'd say yes this is a perfect camera if you need 61 megapixels i don't which means i'm going to switch a lot to 26 megapixels in the APS-C mode but 26 megapixels is more than enough it's well the same as on the fx30 i'm filming on right now um and yes yes of course you can use lossless raw um, medium sized which is 26 megapixels as well but you know if you're buying this machine this monster for 61 megapixels then use those 26 megapixels or the APC mode if you need extra reach so no for me this is a wonderful camera it's not a camera for the kind of work I do so I'm going to wait until this technology hits the new generation of other Sony cameras. Signing out with the a7R5 and see you soon with another camera.